<clears throat> All right, so uh, we're just going to go over the market, starting with the ES and then the rest of the markets, uh, basically crude and gold. All right, so today, this was uh, really interesting. Market did a spring or a breakdown. Initially, it looked like a breakdown. Okay, so market goes, does this. It looks like a breakdown because the downtrend and all that, right? As it hits this level, you have buyers come in. You have buyers come in. As it taps the level, the buyers come in. And you know by the high volume print that basically they're buying. And the other thing you have to know is mostly change of behaviors or sign of strength or change of character. They come from lower lows. They typically have a tendency to come from lower lows because they, the lower low represents the best price, meaning no um, price to the left-hand side is that low. So they get the best price because it's the lowest price, relatively speaking, and you have that high volume print because they're buying the low. So it makes a lower low. It looks like a breakdown, but it gets bought up. So this was your change of behavior or buying, and then it just uh, went up. There was some <clears throat> shortening of the thrust here, meaning it was losing some momentum, but there was no selling. So when there, when you have a shortening of the thrust and there's no selling, chances are they're just probing the high. So that's what's happening. And then after that, you had this move and then end of day selling came back down to support and I think it rallied. So something's going on in the markets because today's move was uh, a lot of buying activity. All right, let's move on into uh, <clears throat> other um, opportunities. So on uh, gold, Unfortunately, this was too early in the morning, but you know, whatever. So uh, it, it dipped down. <clears throat> this was reaccumulation. And this was the breakout. So it looked climactic, but sometimes, you know, the heavy volume, you can't really detect if it's breakout volume or it's or it's climactic volume because the waves, they still have a lot of volume. So you need to know where it is in the position of the trend. Is it overbought, etc., etc. So you just know it's high volume, but it's difficult to tell is this climactic or not. You know, at least in the shortening of the thrust, it's a small wave. So it has very little volume. But with climactic volume, you have, you know, it's very difficult to identify whether it's a breakout or it's a climactic move. And you have to add additional judgment and see if it's, you know, high, 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 and it just overshoots, or is there a base before it, and then it breaks. So in this case, there's a base right here, and then it breaks. After that, pulls back test. This was, I think, 8.05 in the morning, and then it just went crazy. Offered a, a test, reversal, and just started going. There's one, <clears throat> there's one here that you have a base again, so it's holding, and then you have a break, but it's too high up, and now you're gonna have a full pullback, and then it becomes a reversal. So you don't want to buy that high up. Um, I mean, you could, but with this kind of selling in the background, no thanks. When you have a base breakout, you want to wait for the pullback and, and watch it on the, on the tape reading chart as well as on the wave volume to see what is the response on the pullback. Is it weak pullback or hell a lot of volume pullback? This has more than double the volume, average volume on the pullback. So it's not a smart idea to try to, you know, buy this. Because it's just too much selling. It means that it, it, it 
went up and they found sellers on the breakout. So bottom line, th this was the only trade. Excuse me. Over here, we have the breakout and the test of this area offering the uh, entry opportunity. And there it is. <clears throat> now let's take a look at oil. Oil, I mean, was so close, so close, but no cigar. So right here, you had the uh, reaccumulation here, pop. I forgot where this was. What did I do? Anyway, so here you had a rally pull back, right? Then a uh, base development and then a break. This is just a rally. You just have to know how to buy base break route is just a rally. You just need to know how to buy the pullback. So after that, it it tested this area. And um and that's it. I mean this is exactly where I expected to go. Um, it could go a little lower, but I mean you just I've become more sensitive. For example, you have volume there and you also have a line I mean, right there. So it's going to tap this area on the pullback. Everyone knows that, right? It, ra it rally pulled back the test, but it's just a stronger base um, test the creek because of the volume situation. There's a lot of volume here. So chances are, it's going to serve as support and then you just wait for it to tap and then go green telling you yes the buyers are still there or maybe the existing buyer or new buyer but someone still wants to buy so it's not ready to change trend and after that based out it had this move here this i'm going to explain this very 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 important um because this identified the reversal as the as you see from high to high to high the shortening of the thrust right but as i explained shortening of the thrust doesn't mean jack shit it doesn't mean anything without the follow through selling shortening of the th weakness in demand can just create a pullback for more demand to come in and make a higher high Weakness in demand by itself cannot change trend unless you have supply taking advantage of that weakness by strong selling. So here is the weakness in demand above this high from high to high to high, the thrust shortened and very, very clearly you can see, look at the volumes. Bingo. That's what I taught people on this channel. I don't know, you know, but <sighs> wait a minute. If you know wave volume and how to use it, and then you'll understand what this is about lack of demand. Also, it's a lot of common sense, you know, as price go higher, what happens to demand? Obviously it goes down and supply increases. That's the nature of the you know supply and demand and making money making profit you want to sell it sell high and buy low I mean, simple as that so as you see price goes high demand has to decrease this is the natural common sense you don't want to buy high prices you want to buy low prices all this buying is at this low you want to buy low prices as price goes up volume and the buying must decrease who's going to buy the highs keep buying the highs Eventually, they would say, you know, the price is too high. I don't want to buy. So professionals are gonna, not going to buy. They will, they'll say, why should I buy up here? I should have bought down here. I'll just wait for it to come back. It's just common sense. So over here, <coughs> as you see, from wave to wave to wave, from high to high to high, the thrust is shortening. Why? Because they're not buying. And the, 
this thing here is going down. So over here by itself, again, showing the thrust doesn't mean jack shit, but I see that the volumes are decreasing. So demand is decreasing, there's lack of demand at making highs. And then this bar comes in. This bar is saying, uh-uh, no more, good, finish. All right, so it's, this is a very important bar not only because it has big thrust and i think it's the biggest thrust since this entire trend which makes it also a change of behavior uh, based on bars it's the biggest bar in the trend makes it a change of behavior just like you have the biggest wave or the, or, or the biggest wave volume the biggest bar also at a high has that change of behavior characteristic because no other bar has that much range and it could also be based on um, individual bar volume as well <clears throat> but anyway, the point that I wanted to make was not that, that this is shortening of the thrust and it's confirmed by selling, but there's a very fine thing here, which you're not going to see a lot of folks talk about, um, but it is a behavior. That behavior is right here. Do you see these overlapping bars? When you have overlapping bars like that, Look at your tape reading chart and you'll see that these overlapping bars are actually distributive. They have, there's distribution going on at the highs. These overlapping bars yielded 6,000 contracts in these overlapping bars here. After which there was a hard reversal telling me that this is distribution at the highs. So this is a very fine notion because, you know, the way we're learning in Wyckoff um, or modern, whatever it is, they, they teach you that uh, distribution has to be in big ranges and accumulation has to be big ranges, but that's not true. Especially, it can be in big ranges with a big base, and a lot of times it is. But a lot of times you just have one selling wave and a couple of bars and that there will be accumulation or distribution in them. That's what effort is. When you have effort reward and all that, the effort, right, is um, accumulation or distribution. If it's effort on the downside, it's bag holding and that's accumulation and it's just a wave, right? And um, similarly with uh, these overlapping bars, overlapping bars are not coincidental folks you just have to know which ones to you know you just have to kind of understand price and volume action so when you see a high being made a thrust being shortened overlapping bars then a break or a heavy down red bar it means that they were selling and now they're ready to go down so that's what's going on and how you confirm it just take a look at the tape reading chart it has a big print 6,000 contracts that's quite high Relatively speaking, the only thing that, I mean, it's bigger than all of these prints all the way since the breakout. When you have that and there's no follow through and there's a reversal that takes out the low, you know, it, you can put two and two together and you put the clues together and realize that, you know, it was distributive and then uh, get in on the test. Unfortunately, I couldn't execute on the test. I just didn't get it and pull back. I don't know why it got, but it went here and then it went down. So this was the reversal move that the, what do you call the turning point trade? This is the turning point trade. This right here is the turning point trade. As you know, I've said a thousand times on the left hand side, you typically have two things. One, shortening of the thrust, two, climactic behavior. These two things are repeated all the time they happen again and again and again and again and again and again where you have what is it climax of shortening of the thrust and um, they, that creates the left hand side and the right hand side you enter after that change of behavior and then it has the lack of supply or lack of demand then it has the reversal these are the characteristics and the change in the dynamic nature of supply and demand that's critical for a white trader to 
uh, understand and that's what creates edge so and then when you see also uh, the volume prints you, your confidence goes up because you you know you see um, selling clearly which is what my topic's going to be so give me one second all right so uh, today little lesson is um, what you are usually taught when you go into trading is candle charts and especially intraday you have price and volume the price is in candle or bar chart and um, this is what you're taught but in all other industries all other um, you know anything else anything whether it's in sales if you've seen sales reports or profitability reports or marketing reports or finance reports what do you get you get data you get data you don't get a candle chart ever i mean they'll it would be totally absurd all right so you if you see the uh, sales reports or anything like that at different um quarterly reports whatever it will show you data it will any report has data and information is communicated buying and selling information is communicated data with numbers it is not communicated buying and selling is not communicated via candle specifically patterns I think we all understand this, that the only field where you have patterns and candlesticks together trying to figure out what these patterns are is trading. No other market, meaning if you take a look at markets, no other market on earth, <coughs> from what I know, uses candle patterns. They use trends and trend lines, but never will they say, you know, the buying and selling uh, of inventory based on uh, pr uh, price looking like a triangle or a head and shoulder. Never in any market, and I mean any market, even in markets of the same market as in trading, like gold and oil, outside of your platform, when um, big players, when they talk and they, and they deal, you think they will never have patterns they will always see an amount it's always an amount price as well as an amount price and an amount at this price this amount that price that amount this is the discount etc etc it's never done on this so this right here i want to be really clear or trying to be really clear is what i call information disadvantage it's not just information it's not an information advantage it's actually information disadvantage due to its randomness due to its ambiguity due to the fact that it cannot be quantified due to the fact that it has nothing really to do with the market in anything outside of trading even in the same gold oil wheat markets outside of your platform on a chart there is no such thing ever being used all trade buying and selling is communicated with data in every market with numbers and it's very important for folks to realize this because you're give you you're being given at information disadvantage because of just candles. Just candles by themselves they are, are information disadvantage. Now, is there some information in them? Yes. What is it? All right. It's the highs, the lows, the range. You know, I know how to read it. So, you know, there is some information, but you're not going to get volume information intraday because those bars are very, um, when you chop up volume in specific time intervals, you can't see the true force of buying and selling, which by the way is the premise of the Weiss wave. 
All right, now on a daily, like I have here, you can see the candle high, low, wick, and high, low, close, wick, and an amount. That's important information. But if I just use a candle chart by itself intraday, I am, I, I'm, I'm uh, basically at an information disadvantage, total information disadvantage. And this is why it is so important to, to understand this because you're not going to be able to make good judgments if you're at an information disadvantage. Anyway, that's the point I want to get together, uh, uh, get across, and um, and really you to make sense of what's going on. You need data and numbers, not patterns, and just a line, or just a support resistant line, or just a trend channel, and then looking at uh, some oscillator. It's not going to work. Maybe maybe it works for some people, but I guarantee you, all those folks are this out liars they're outliers they're outliers that's all i can say because this makes no sense no sense nobody in their right mind would uh, really think about it outside of it's only because we're trained to do this shit that you know we're stuck but you got to get out of this and get back into this because it is the way business is done. Data and numbers, are price and volume at that price and things like that. Anyway, so this is the point I'm trying to make is your information disadvantage. If this is what you're focusing on. It just, it's not, it just doesn't work. And just to show you, like uh, over here, for example, I mean, imagine this. I'm looking at this, and I'm just looking here, and I see these bars. I don't know what the what's going on here. I might just see this higher high, and say, "Oh, it's a higher high." But if I look at the numbers, I see six thousand contracts traded at that high which was a prior high and did not break out meaning they're selling at prior resistance and it's heavy how heavy six thousand i've quantified the amount and that has led to a big red reversal that is data looking at this and china just you know what the fuck is this up here? That's some, that, I don't even know what pattern this is. It's just, just high, I might not even pay attention to it. So, I mean, do you see the difference? Retest of the high 6,000 contracts breaks down red reversal versus nothing. Just a higher high, I don't know what this is, I can't even detect anything. All right, so. That's what I try to uh, get across. All right, anyway, have a good uh, rest of your day. Take care. Bye.